Rugby Championship, game number one, folks. Wallabies hosting the Springboks from Brisbane. It is the first game. It's an afternoon game. It's a venue that the Aussies do pretty well. It's a game where the box have picked Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu at 10. A bit of pressure on that young man to kind of correct South Africa's not particularly fantastic record in Brisbane. And the Wallabies, that is a young front row up against what is essentially a World Cup winning Springbok front row. We will go through the squads. You better believe I got some stats for you. Some recent history predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. The Wallabies, like I said, the squad, I've said it a few times, it's kind of in rebuilding mode with Joe Schmidt, seemingly trying to pull things out of the fire that he was left by outgoing coach Eddie Jones. Things have gone all right so far. They managed to get their series win over the Welsh. They managed to get past Georgia despite a red card. And yeah, now they've got to play the world champion. So Joe Schmidt's kind of basically said he wish he had a bit more time for this one. But we will soon get a real idea of just where this Wallaby side is at. I mentioned the front row is an experience. They've gone with Kaleo Fessler and Ala Alatoa in the front row. Now Ala Alatoa is obviously a veteran experienced campaigner at this point, And they have James Slipper on the bench. So there you got two proper Wallabies veterans. But then you've got Kailea. And you got Fasla. Kailea has three caps. Fasla has seven. And then on the bench, you got Josh Nasser, who has two. And Zayn Nongor, who has six. And that's up against the Springbok. So there is no kind of deeper end to be thrown into for these Wallabies guys. But Kailea in particular has looked good in what limited amount we have seen him at international level. But he's certainly going to have to up things a gear into, uh, into this game. The obvious omission here is Taniala Tupo. He is a massive omission just because of his physical presence as part of it. But um, sadly, I think his father passed away recently. So he's attending to some kind of personal matters. And I think everyone would support him in that. So really unfortunate timing for the Wallabies. But you got to let the big man grieve. And hopefully he's back uh, for the next game at Perth. Frost and Talakai Lotto is the locking duo. So there's still no kind of set duo for, for Joe Schmidt in the second row. Salako Lotto is a pretty big physical presence uh, in the number five jersey. And Nick Frost is that kind of lock who can play a bit of loose forward, likes to win quite a lot of lineup ball. So I think they complement each other pretty well. And they've got another debutant in the back row in Carlo Tizano at seven. Remember, they've had a bit of an injury crisis with Liam Wright getting injured, with Fraser McCright, who's probably been the Aussie form player of the year in Super Rugby. He's injured. So you got a debutant in Carlo Desano at number seven. If you've never seen him play, if you're a South African fan, you've been watching Super Rugby, he's the Western Force player who's essentially one of the top tacklers for the entire competition. Uh, so you can expect him to just tackle and tackle and tackle some more. Uh, Harry Wilson is at eight and Rob Bellatini is at seven. Both those guys are pretty experienced campaigners, although Wilson's kind of been in and out of the Wallabies over recent years. Bellatini's been something of a consistent guy, but both love a ball carry. Wilson loves an offload, even if that's not really the game style that Joe kind of will be asking him to play. Jake Gordon is at 9, alongside Lolosio at 10. That's definitely, from what we've seen thus far, I think uh, Joe Schmidt's preferred combo. He likes the extra height that Jake Gordon's able to get on that box kick. Doesn't ask him to do a heck of a lot of running, but he certainly scored at least one try uh, in the kind of July series when he chased one of his own kicks. And then Lolosio, it's another chance for him to kind of stand up at the top level like he's been given chances at 10 for the wallabies before he's been playing consistently all year for the brumbies and again he's done it against wales now it's time to have a crack against stronger opposition in terms of the reigning world champions number one team in the world uh midfield of paisami and ikita was actually consistent from that georgia game so joe must have liked what he's seen uh from that one callaway comes up from the bench onto the right wing dalgunu having served his suspension from that red card due to some kind of club rugby commitments, I believe, uh, on the left wing. It's kind of one of those interesting loopholes in the kind of band system. And then Tom Wright is also kind of a consistent guy, preferred guy uh, for Joe Schmidt at 15. The guy loves a big ball carry. He's got a great step. If you saw him in the July series, he scored an excellent try with just a little bit of fancy footwork and a lot of gas. So, um, yeah, the, the box will be, have to be careful if they're going to kick that guy the ball. I mentioned the front row bench replacements already, but then uh, other forwards, we've got Jeremy Williams and Luke Reimer. Luke Reimer will be getting his first cap as well, so big congratulations to him. It is a uh, 
it's a big game. You can maybe expect him to come on early if there are some tired bodies out there. Three backs on the bench with Tate McDermott, who drops to the bench, having played the starting role against Georgia. Tom Liner, who's just recently come into the Wallaby scene, and Dylan Peach, who has likewise only recently come in. Other kind of big omissions, you would say, Marika Korombedi, who they did call back from Japan. They're kind of only overseas-based guy into the squad, but he doesn't get selected. You know, previous coaches have basically said, I'm not going to call guys back from overseas if they're not going to play. But he would have had a lot less time with the squad than the rest of the guys, so it makes sense that he's gone with the guys who have been in the squad, you know, uh, for this kind of July series, rather than chucking Marika into the deep end. For the Springboks, obviously, Sasha at 10 is the big talking point. The guy has passed every test that has been thrown at him in Test Rugby thus far. But now he's got the starting role at number 10 for the Springboks. He's relegated Andre Pollard, double World Cup winning 10, to the bench. Rossi did say he's got an eye on the future by giving Sasha a game at 10. There's certainly a lot of pressure on him, and he's got the good vibes thus far. South African fans can be pretty harsh on their players who don't perform at the top level. But so far, he seems to be pretty universally loved, and for good reason, because he's been playing the house down. He's got a good running game. He can kick. He's been kicking from the tee. Uh, he's been setting up other guys, so just doing a bit of everything. Now he's got to do it from the starting role and at a venue, as I said, where the box haven't had a heck of a lot of success. But he's got a lot of experience around him. Oxen chair, Bongi, and Madame Franz Malchoba. That is a World Cup winning front row. They will absolutely be looking to turn the screws uh, at scrum time against a much less experienced Wallabies pack. It's a Beth and Snayman in the second row. Although there's a slight injury cloud about Snayman. It might be Nokia, uh, depending if kind of Snayman passes the late checks because he's had a little bit of a niggle. But again, there's a lot of beef in that type five for the box. And then a back row of Khaleesi, Dutoy, and Lowe. The question about number eight is the only kind of only real question mark about the Springbok pack because. With, uh, with Mostert out injured, the rest of the kind of type five, essentially, it's pretty par for the course. That's That's been Rossi's more or less kind of favored guys in many of those positions, either the first or second choice guy. But number eight, with Vermeulen having retired and Visa being suspended, there's a little bit of, um, I don't want to say uncertainty, but there was a, there was a, a chance there for somebody to step up. It might have been Quokka Smith, but in this case, they go with Eric Lowe. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good reward for, uh, reward for a bit of form from that guy. Uh, backs wise, Corbus Reinach is alongside Sasha in the 19 combo. So that's a lot of experience in Reinach uh, to, to man the, the battle stations alongside Sasha. Midfield is Delende and Creel, which is certainly the premier midfield combo for South Africa at the moment. Where Lacanio Am uh, doesn't make the 23 with this one, although he did feature against Portugal, played really well. Remember, Esther Hazen got himself suspended in that game. But um, yeah, Rossi is not really kind of pulling any punches with this one by by tinkering. He's gone with that midfield combo he likes, and they have been a good duo for quite some time now. Uh, Aronso, who did play against Portugal, switches wings to the left to return uh, of Colby on the right, and LaRue is back to pull the strings at 15. Remember, he went off early in that second test against Ireland, and any time that guy is there at fullback pulling those strings... You feel like the Springboks back line just clicks a little bit better. He is such a playmaker. Uh, Bench-wise, Marks, Steenkamp, and Koch. So Steenkamp is the kind of least experienced guy in this mix, but he certainly looked good from what limited amount we've been able to see him at test level. And, uh, I mean, just caps-wise, you'd rather have the Springboks guys than what you see from the Wallabies. Like, it's a very, very, very just contrast and experience. It's nice to be able to bring in kind of one or two low-cap guys to mix it amongst the veterans rather than there only being one or two veterans with a bunch of youngsters, but uh, that's just the way it is at the moment. Ben Jason Dixon is another guy who Russi speaks really highly of, and I can see why, because he's looked at the business from what limited amount we've seen him. He's been compared to Peter Steph Dutoy. Uh, he could potentially be covering Locke. Likewise, Peter Steph could also cover Locke if needs be in this game because they don't have a specialist Locke on the bench. Van Staden is there. He'll likely replace Khaleesi. He's tended to replace them after 50-odd minutes most of the games he's been playing. And then Quaka Smith being there means they've only got the two backs on the bench, which is Grant Williams and Hunter Pollard. But remember, Quaka Smith could certainly play in the back line, and Rossi alluded to that fact as well because he's got that sevens background. He is kind of Mr. Versatile. Boxer, obviously, without a bunch of guys injured. Um, you know, Mostert's injured, Visa suspended, Kitsoff's still not back ready. The list goes on um, for the box. I promised you some stats. The South Africans are kicking it less 
than the Wallabies in 2024 South Africa. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. It gets this thing about how they kick it a lot. Well, certainly not at the moment. They're kicking less than the uh, the Wallabies, 26 kicks a game. From the limited three games we've seen from the Wallabies thus far, uh, the South Africans are down at kind of 23. Most of the Tier 1 teams in that last round of July tests kicked it a bit less against their Tier 2 opponents. That's just uh, the way the games tended to be played, a bit more running rugby when you've kind of got a little bit less pressure on from the kind of strength of opposition. And South Africa is offloading it more than Australia. Joe Schmidt like kind of precision, careful, planned rugby, and that's reflected in the offload numbers. Uh, I think it's like 10 offloads a game for the Wallabies, whereas the, sorry, the, uh, the box, whereas the Wallabies are kind of down more towards five. So the Wallabies have been under Schmidt thus far, just kind of building those layers into the game, keeping things relatively straightforward to start with anyway. South Africa will want to reduce the amount of clean breaks they've conceded, like they were very tight against Wales, but Ireland and then even Portugal, albeit South Africa had 14 men in that game, managed to kind of break the Springboks lines more times than the South African coaches will be happy with. And interestingly, uh, the fourth quarter has been South Africa's best. That tends to be when they have been scoring a fair few points. I know they lost that second Irish test in the fourth quarter, but I think the points total in that quarter was, was it six each? But yeah, uh, overall across the four games they've played thus far this year, that has been the most prolific for the box, whereas for the Wallabies, it's the first 20. So one would think if the Wallabies are going to get a result here against a much more experienced Springboks lineup, maybe they need to come out of the blocks fast, put some uh, put some distance between them and the box, and then hold on as the box potentially surge back. We will see. Each game is its kind of own little nuanced thing. Uh, recent history between the sides sees the Australians have the better of the last five. It's three games against two, although the last two games have both been South African wins. One at Sydney Football Stadium, where the Aussies did not have a very good record. They won there in the July tests, but their record in Sydney over recent years has genuinely been terrible. And then last year's game uh, at Loftus was really lopsided, 43 points to 12. Average score, though, favours the box 25-21 over those last few games because there's been a couple of times when the margins have been pretty big, especially those last two, like 24-8 and 43-12. Yeah, pretty big score lines. Um, the last game in Brisbane was 30 points to 17 to the Wallabies, though. And the box haven't won in Brisbane since 2013. So it has traditionally been something more of a fortress stadium for the Wallabies. Like not like Eden Park level of fortress, but I think if we did the numbers, it'd probably be their, their best ground in recent years in terms of their success rate. Predictions wise, the bookies are saying the box by nine points and the rugby forecast algorithm is going a step further and saying the box by 13. The referee for this one is Luke Pierce, and it is an afternoon kickoff, 2.45, I believe it's an early kickoff, to accommodate some of the Olympics coverage or something like that. So it is an unusual kickoff time, but certainly uh, afternoon rugby should make for some pretty good ball handling and some pretty good skills on display. Subscribe to the channel, folks, if you wouldn't mind, if you appreciated some of the stats, like the offload and kicking numbers, which are always fun ones to look at. And uh, let us know your thoughts on who you think is going to get the win in the first game of the Rugby Championship 2024. You guys take care, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.